Greetings everybody, I am Jay and I welcome you to my first Walson guide for the release version. The game has been out for about two and a half days now and I wanted to take the opportunity that the online servers are still not available to present you my build, I've been playing offline and steamrolled everything with. If you do not want to get spoiled on endgame content, please skip the gameplay parts of this video. Time spans can be found in the video description along with the written information guide. This build is an ailment focused hybrid tech and spellcaster utilizing the extremely OP ailment mechanic in this game. We will always apply multiple ailments on every enemy you encounter and against tough enemies we get up to 7 different ailments which allows this build to break every boss within 2 seconds and take it down while it is stunned. If a boss somehow survives your deadly character for more than 5 seconds it will also be heavily debuffed. This is an early look on this character since I did not want to spend too much time in offline mode, but I'll make sure to upload any updates on the build on how it functions in the light 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 game. Let's start with gameplay now. So anybody who doesn't want to get spoiled, skip this section with the timestamps time stamps in the video description. So we are going to run uh, just one of these uh, mandates just to show off the build. Um, Normal gameplay is you want to spend some willpower with your ether jump, activate your plague burst, use your bleeding edge, and uh, yeah, then you just run through the content. I'm going to collect some yellow loot here. So, yeah. The only thing you really have to, uh, or you really want to look out for is trying to not overspend any of your resource, otherwise you will end up having either no rage or no willpower. So you always want to jump and then use your rage and then jump again, use your rage. So yeah, Let's see. there's a tough enemy. You could have seen I've also been using my uh, Infinity Blades there. Oh, I need Anorects because I need the purple stuff. And I'm still going to collect Yellow Loop because I'm, I'm quite early into the game. So nothing too special. Character is currently level 51. So nothing too special going on. So, and again, pretty much everything you want to do is... Spend some willpower, use your bleeding edge, and then just keep up bleeding edge plus uh, plank burst, and then jump around, kill everything. Bleeding edge deals enough damage to uh, to kill most of the stuff. Against tougher enemies, you want to also go for some uh, bleeding. No, no, not bleeding. Infinity Blade action. Just like against this dude. And... Okay. There I go. I didn't... I didn't look at my... At my bar there. I had no willpower there. But you saw... I pretty much immediately broke the boss type of enemy. So I couldn't do anything anyways. That's because my damage is quite good. So there's another tough enemy. Let's do it once again. So I will use everything. Just attack it and yeah, then it's gone. So the build has quite a lot of damage. And if you focus a little bit on resistances, you will be fine and you won't die as well. So I gotta go to town here real quick so we can talk about the skills. So your main skill that's going to clear uh, these expeditions and stuff like that is going to be Bleeding Edge. For Bleeding Edge you want to focus on Astral Orbit first, if you have the level of course. This makes the axe um, follow you, so it will spin in a circle around you, which is really easy or which is not mandatory, but it's it fe really feels really really good. So you just have to walk through enemies and everything around you will die. So that's really good for this. Other than that, you want unstoppable momentum. So the X doesn't uh, doesn't stop. 
So normally the X would do one full rotation. With unstoppable momentum you will have more than just one rotation. And after that you want to go for wicked swing for more AoE. We don't need direct damage on Bleeding Edge because our damage comes from our ailments. So if you get, uh, get this skill to more than 8 modifier points you would want to go for something like ailment damage and ailment chance or cyclonic expansion for better reach. The other skill is the Aura-like Plague Burst, which is my number 4 skill down here. And for this one you want to focus on Noxious Smog first, if you do not need conversion. I'm going to talk about conversion in, in a moment, but yeah, if you need conversion, Pauper's Last Rites first. Other than that, go for Noxious Smog, then go for the Area of Effect, and then for just some damage and ailment damage. Later on you can um, use pretty much anything you want. Vitai Vitaiation, I have no idea how to pronounce that, is a really good choice here. And also, where is it? Uh, Corruption's Bloat. If you're playing an allies build, so you can you can spawn allies and then uh, kill them again with Modifier's Guest, and then you can kill them again with Corruption's Blow. But that, that's some light game mechanic that you actually don't really need because you're you are going to deal more than enough damage, so you don't have to overthink on Plague Burst. The uh, jump ability I was using is Either Jump. With March of the Time Devourers, you don't have a cooldown on this skill but you will have an increased willpower cost. This makes it possible to, possible to always uh, jump and then use your bleeding edge and then jump around a little bit and then use your bleeding edge again. So your bleeding edge will always be up. You can see my willpower and rage uh, constantly moving between willpower and rage there. So after you have March of the Time Devourers, which is necessary, otherwise you are not going to have enough rage in order to cast Bleeding Edge because it has a 300 rage cost which is super damn high. So get this one first. Other than that, Fragments of Aether. Another ailment, as I said we're going to stack ailments, ailments, ailments. So this is the stasis element right here. Then we want Time Paradox. Removes all crowd control effects. So sometimes you will get stunned, sometimes you get frozen or stuff like that and if you get stunned in this game usually you will die because all monsters are going to close in so in order to get away you can just press either jump break out of the crowd control and you're gone so other than that i like interstitial boost for the movement speed but you can literally take anything you can also take uh, range you can take the decoy just take whatever you prefer the uh, my right click skill, which I only use against bosses, is Infinity Blades. Why Infinity Blades? Because I think that's the best looking skill in the game. And I like the melee playstyle. So you can play this build on ranged as well, but I like the melee playstyle. So I will present you my melee build right here. You want to go for Gusts in Dark Space first, because we don't want the Ether damage, we want the shadow damage. Shadow inflicts curse and the cursed ailment lets enemies take increased damage. And we get the ether, uh, the ether ailment from the ether jump anyways, which is stasis. So we don't want to stack uh, the same ailment on every single skill. We want to make sure we get as many different ailments as we can get. So once you get dusks in the dark space, we also want uh, records printed in matter for some AOE. Then uh, uh, ubiquitous wound. Don't know if I pronounced it correctly for the ailment damage. Then you want anti-mobility form. So the skill normally doesn't deal a lot of damage, but since we are going to stack up to seven ailments on an enemy, if we have seven ailments on an enemy, this skill will actually deal some really, really good damage with this. Uh, rune right here and then we're going to increase the damage further but 
You can also choose something like a four shield region or um, a debuff that increases damage taken by spells. So, or the block chance. So you can pretty much choose whatever you want. Really important is just dusk in the dark space because we want the curse ailment. Next skill would be Bulwark of Dawn. So Bulwark of Dawn is a healing aura or like a healing field, but that doesn't deal any damage. So it, it just regens your health. And usually you can only cast it on the ground. With Divine Omnipresence, the effect will follow you. So if you feel like you need some healing or if you're going to encounter a boss, you can press it before the boss fight and then jump into the boss fight. After that, you want Sacred Grounds, because again, we want to deal as much ailment damage as possible, or we want to inflict as many ailments as possible. And since Bulwark of Dawn has a Sacred Damage base, it will apply Weakness. And with Weakness, we get another ailment that we don't get on any other skill. So. Sacred Grounds is, is, is really nice here. Other than that, you want to go for some duration and cooldown and then or maybe more healing or resistances and stuff like that. You, you can choose whatever you want in there. The last skill would be once I have, have it unlocked. If I do not have a dagger as my main weapon, which I don't have, I have an axe right now. If I would have a dagger, I would go for for Mark of Impurity. And for Mark of Impurity, you would go for the ailment damage first. So, um, where is it? I can't find it right now. Where the hell? What? Defect of Creation. I, you, you've probably seen it, so you wanna. Uh, ah, there it is. Increase armor damage on marked enemies. Sorry for that. So you want to go for this one first. Then you want to go for the 10% execute on Strange Mercy. Then you would go for Weight of Infamy. I will explain it in a moment why you would go for Weight of Infamy. Because we need to slow somewhere, but one moment. And then you would go for something like Big Game Hunting, Wake of Culpability, just more damage or longer duration or cooldown, depending on what you want to go for. Doesn't really matter. If you don't have a dagger as your main weapon, just as I do, I will go for blood for blood in my last slot down here. The first, first thing that I would go for is unrelenting attrition. This means instead of just creating an area on the ground, you will now have an area of effect that follows the target. The target can be yourself, it can be an enemy, it can be uh, one of your minions, depending on who you cast it on or which target you cast it on, the effect will follow the target, which is really nice. Again, for boss preparation, you can just cast it on yourself and then jump in with all your auras up and then you will annihilate anything that's around you. Other than that, you wanna go for fear marches Increase damage on enemies suffering from damage over time. Our damaging ailments are damaged over time, so that's really good. And then you want to go for Grip of Agony, increased duration. Because it only has a base duration of 5 seconds, which is relatively low, you want to have a higher duration, so there is time for failure as well. Other than that, you want to go for AoE, health region, ailment chance, or organic failure. So movement speed for enemies inside the area of effect, which I will get later to. Same as for the mark of impurity, you want to have a slow somewhere. That's it for our active skills. Let's go over our passives. Here we are. And as I said, we are going to stack ailments. So the first note you want to go for is attrition strategist with the material status element chance on the way there because uh, you will level up with bleeding edge and bleeding edge will be your main damage dealing skill since bleeding edge will do bleeding 
which is a material element. You want to have the material status I'm in chance here. After attrition strategist, you want to go for insidious decay. This means you will, instead of just inflicting one stack of ailment, you will now inflict three. Then you want to go for power of the first man, which is over here. So you want to over here, power of the first man. So instead of three elements, you will be able to inflict six elements because you multiply the number of element stacks per infliction. And then, as soon as you have to give for it, so as soon as your skill doesn't only deal rent damage, but also something like burning damage, you want to go for grievous afflictions and also a mortal offering. If you don't have the gear yet, I I found my first belt, I believe, on level 30 something, so it might take you some while to get the gear. You can go for feast of for the crowds first, some uh, life leech, feels, it feels really nice, some additional region because you don't have a lot of region in this build. Bestial Frenzy for some additional damage because you're going to be within range of a lot of enemies usually. And then you go for Branded Burst for some really, really strong defensive options. So Branded Burst make, uh, lets you get stacks and each stack grants you damage reduction against the next hit. But each of the uh, of these hits will remove one stack. So it's a lot of damage reduction if you're on a fast character and you don't take a lot of hits. After that, I went for a backline raider just for some attack and spell speed, just to just make uh, the build feel a little bit smoother. It's not really necessary, but it, it it just feels better. After that, I went for retaliator. It's a little bit of damage, and since we don't scale with crit, it doesn't really matter that we lose the critical strike chance here. My next thing I would like to pick up would be Second Wind, which is a lot of regen if we get below a certain point of health. And then we want to go for Persistence Hunting. This grants us 25% damage to enemies with impaired movement. And this is why I said you want to have either organic failure on your blood for blood, reduces movement speed, or the uh, weight of infamy, so your marked enemies are slowed once you have the fifth, the uh, fifth skill down there. So this will be a, a lot of a lot of more damage here. I don't need it right now. I just went for the defense first, so. You can pick it up earlier as, as well if you want. Other than that, you might want to pick up last mana. If you pick up last mana, you want to change your plague burst to the um, heal globe, rune, chance for explosions to drop a health globe. So this buff will be up pretty much all the time during uh, during expeditions and stuff like that. So a lot of resistance score here. 40% isn't that much, but you can feel it. I guarantee you, you can feel it. So you don't get get like one shot or you, you don't die from something really, really bad if you have it active. Other than that, you can pretty much take everything I was thinking about of academic fieldwork as well or duty to exterminate. Duty to exterminate only because of the max willpower. Because if you have more max willpower you can jump a little bit more often until you need to cast your bleeding edge and the other way around as well. So it just makes the build feel a little bit smoother. This is also the reason why I have the emotional intelligence up here for 150 max willpower and rage. If if you feel like you we need a lot more damage, then you would opt out of retaliator and you would go for primordial insights. So if you want to build this character based on crit, you want to swap these two for each other. But I feel like I've, I'm dealing enough damage, so I wouldn't say it's really necessary. 
The character is currently purely on Wisdom, like 100% every single point I got is in Wisdom. If you wanna go for the crit I just talked about with Primordial Insight in, instead of Retaliator, you wanna make a mix of Ferocity and Wisdom, but I didn't try it. Maybe it's it will be necessary, maybe in the later stages of the game, but right now you saw that I've been dealing way more than enough damage. Okay, let's go over how the ailment stacking works now. So, usually one skill can only apply one ailment. If we take grievous afflictions, every skill can now two ailments. What that means is, on our bleeding edge, we want to have a secondary ailment, which means in my case, I have toxic damage added to attacks. And this can be quite low. You just need to have one other stat, one other type of damage on your gear somewhere. And for bleeding edge, it's important. If it's on the weapon, it doesn't work for bleeding edge. So I have it on my belt. I have some toxic damage added to attacks. So you can see I have bleed stacks and poison stacks application with bleeding edge now. But we are not only using Bleeding Edge, we are also using spells and we want to get as many elements as we can possibly get. So this is where the Plague Burst comes in. Enemies that die within the Plague Burst area of effect will leave an explosion or explode and then they will leave the smoke cloud. The smoke cloud and the explosion can both apply ailments as well. Normally this would be poison, but I have the uh, conversion toxic to fire damage so I will apply burn with the plague burst and then I have lightning damage added to spells on my catalyst so I will apply poison and uh, burn and shock with my plague burst so we're already at four elements that pretty much always proc while you're running through enemies because bleeding edge kills stuff then plague burst will explode and the explosion will apply the other ailments to enemies around the enemy I just killed. So four ailments right here. But I said we are going up to seven ailments on an enemy. The next ailment will be coming from Ether Jump with the ruined fragments of Ether. Enemies near the beginning and end of the teleport are inflicted with stasis. So if you jump into a pack of enemies like that, the enemies will be inflicted with stasis, so they will be inflicted with all these elements already. The next one, which is only important against bosses, will be our Infinity Blades. The Infinity Blades with the Ether into Shadow Damage conversion will make Ether Blade inflict Cursed. Also Shock, because we still have the Lightning Damage added to spells but the curse is really important. So we are up to six elements now against a single target. And to top that off, we also use Bulwark of Dawn with the Sacred Grounds. What that means is that our Bulwark of Dawn will deal sacred damage to the enemy and will apply weakness ailment. So we are up to seven ailments. And because we have Immortal Offering, if we kill an enemy that has an ailment stack on the enemy, we get 5% damage. But now we have, well, we have more than just five stacks per ailment because once we apply it, uh, once we apply an ailment, we already have six. So we, we apply one, one stack, just, just like that, and then plus two, so we apply three, and then we double it. So we apply six stacks as soon as we apply our first ailment. So we will always get the maximum effect out of Immortal Offering. But we get the damage for each damage type or each ailment the enemy is inflicted on. So if you kill an enemy with, with all seven ailments on top of it, you will get a lot of added damage, which actually means that even though most of our damage comes from the ailments, we will now deal a lot of damage with our hits as well. This is why we are burning down bosses so extremely quickly. Because we have all the ailments stacking on top of the enemy. Every ailment will deal damage um, no matter if there are other ailments on the enemy. 
And then we are also going to deal a lot of damage with our blades and bleeding edge. So just a lot of damage. You've seen it and I will go in there and kill the boss later on. Which, uh, okay, there is no boss, but doesn't matter. So, now we get all the ailments. The perfect example would be you have, which I don't, would be that you have fire damage to attacks. So your bleeding edge inflicts bleed and burn. And then you have um, lightning damage to spells, which I already have. Because then you would, uh, you, you would need this rune. Instead, you could take something else, for example, the health club rune in here. So, my gear is not optimal, my character is only level 51, so... But you, you can see that I'm still steamrolling everything. The next thing is the gear. Oh yeah, and by the way, if you want to have any further information about ailments and stuff like that, I really suggest you just click on your character sheet, show details and you got more than enough information about your character here in order to make some decisions to improve your character. But yeah, let's go over the gear. As I said already, you need some damage added somewhere. So I have toxic damage added here. Sadly, I also have shadow damage added to spells, which I do not want. So I have to make sure that the lightning damage to spells is higher than the shadow damage like here. So I have the toxic damage to attacks and the lightning damage to spells here. Other than that, it's pretty much straightforward. Your gear doesn't need any special rolls or stuff like that. I don't have any good gear. Some of it is from like level 40, level 38 ring, level 36 ring, so it's, it's nothing special about my gear here. But make sure you have a catalyst and a one-handed weapon. With a dagger you can use Mark of Impurity, without a dagger you will use Blood for Blood as your fifth skill. Offensive mods on your gear are percentage damage or status ailment chance, stuff like that, or wisdom. Defensive mods would be resistances or health or toughness. I have some health here, this is the only reason why I have this amulet, because it's a lot of health. And utility, you will, I will, I'm always looking out for transfer time reduction, because since we are using the the catalyst as an offend, you can see that it takes a long time until all the used up rage or willpower is transferred to the other resource. So you want to have transfer time reduction between willpower and rage. Feels really good if you have it. Other than that, you want movement speed, some cooldown reduction, resource cost reduction, a cat, attack and cast speed, wisdom, agility, just stuff that makes you faster. Because you deal quite a lot of damage, so you just want to be faster. And to finish up this video, I want to go back in here. Oh my god. I... I took the wrong portal. I want to go back. So you can see, I just jump in, use my jump a few times. My jump will generate rage. And then we are going to kill the bosses quite easily. And I need to, well, okay. I'm not going to collect this gear right now. There you go, just killing all these. Just making sure to always spend some resource. So you don't end up uh, not having your bleeding edge active. Right there, I forgot it. I forgot to spend some because I can't play and talk at the same time. And well, yeah, let's take a look in here. Maybe there is a nice boss. Ah, please don't like, oh. For some reason, I can't freaking collect this. Okay, I have to click like five billion times, but that's fine. So, you can see, these uh, these decks down there are these decks from my passive I've been talking about. 
So with these stacks, my bleeding edge, without the bleeding already, deals huge amounts of damage. Okay, well, that's it. Sadly, there is no big boss, but I think you've seen the video or you've seen the boss kill in the video. So you don't need any special gear, just need the skill set up. This build is not like super boring to play. You always have to keep an eye on your rage and willpower. And once you overspend on something, it's going to feel really bad. Just like I did now, I overspend rage. And other than that, you are just going to wreck everything in a way. I hope you like this video. If you like it, please leave a like. Leave a comment if you like this build and if you want to see more of my builds. I will be able to produce quite a few more. So make sure to leave a subscribe as well. Thank you very much for watching. I am Jay and I'm out.